Hi everyone, it's Kelly Van Washanova with Educational Technology Services here at Denison. I'm going to walk you through how to use Google Meet to host a live class or to pre-record a lecture and then share it with your class after. So the first thing that you should do is open up a Google Chrome browser and you can access the Google uh, Meet through a few different ways. One way to do it is to use your calendar in Google and create meetings. This is my preferred method, but we will all have different preferences. So to do that, you can go through the My Denison portal and up in the top right, you will see you have a link for a Google Calendar. If you click on that, it should take you to your Google Calendar. And in here is where you can schedule meetings. And some people will be more familiar with scheduling meetings than others. Uh, but scheduling a meeting is pretty easy. You can do that by finding the date and the time and clicking on that on the grid. So I clicked on 12 to 1 p.m. today, March 12th, and it shows up there. You can give it a title. And when you click more options, you can go in here and set up details about your meeting. Uh, the other way to do it within the calendar is you have a create option on the top left. If you hit create, it will automatically generate an event for you. Now it's going to put that event or meeting right away, but if you click more options, you can go in and change it. So let's say, for example, I was setting up a course that I have and I wanted to have a live session for every one of those classes, every one of our meeting times, and I just want to have it there. And if students are able to join during the session, they can come in and join. If they are unable to join, then I will have a recording available for them. So that's the scenario I'm going to set up here. So my class title might be W101. I'm just going to keep it simple for the demo. And then I would come in here and choose the meeting times for my course. So I'm going to say Tuesdays and Thursdays from, let's say, 10 to 1120. Okay. So I put it today, 10 to 1120. And here it says does not repeat. If you click on that, you can choose different options for repeating it. So I'm going to go to custom. And in my custom menu, I can say repeats every one week or however I want to do it. I can choose the days. And I can even give it an end time. So I can say it repeats every week on Tuesday and Thursday. And I can just pick a date and I'm going to say have it end on May 8th just to put an end date on it then I can click the done option. Now I have the class in here, but I don't have conferencing set up with Google Meet. To do that, I go to this conferencing option where you can see there is the video and I click there and choose Hangout Meets. Now I've created an event on my own calendar for it. I just hit save. And I want to show you what that looks like. So on my calendar here, and let me just change my calendar color because that is not a great one there. Now I can see on my calendar that I have set up the W101 writing course here on Thursday. And what I can do is I can click to view the details of that course. And when I'm ready, I can click join Hangouts Meet. I could join by phone if I don't have an internet connection. What I can do here is I can also copy this information and share that with students in my course. So what I did is I selected it, and you can hit Command C or Control C on a PC, and that copies the information. What I could do from there is I can just distribute that to my students through an email or through Notebook if I want. However, an even easier way to do that would be to go into this meeting by clicking and choosing the Edit Event. And I could just add the students in my course. So by adding the students in my course, it will also show up on their Google Calendar. They will receive a notification for it. 
and they will be able to access it as well. So I'm going to add myself here so I can show you how that looks on an additional calendar. But if the two students in this course were Cheryl and myself, I would add them. You can also give guest permissions to invite people to the guest, see the guest list, modify the event. So if you don't want them to see that, change it there. You could add a description of what's going on in the class for that day if you wish. I'm going to hit save. It's asking me with what I edited by adding Cheryl and Kelly to this meeting or event, how I want to edit it since it's recurring. And I'm going to choose this and following events or all events because Cheryl and Kelly will be students for all of them. However, if you wanted, you could just add them one event at a time. Then I'm going to choose OK. And it says, would you like to send invitation emails to Google Calendar Guests? I'm going to send. So now let's look at my regular calendar. You can see that I also have this meeting showing up on my regular calendar and I can hit yes. So this is what a student would see. They can hit yes to respond to this event, all events, okay. And Cheryl will have also received a notification to this event that she can join or add to her calendar. So that's really setting up the event when you are ready to actually join the Hangouts Meet and anyone who you added, so if you already added your students, they will see it there and they can also join the Hangouts Meet. So let's click that. And look, it found me. Hi. Uh, in here, you can see that you have a microphone. To mute it, you would turn it off there. You also have a camera. You can turn it off there. Over here, the three dots indicate that you have more options. So if you click on those three dots, you can see settings. And this one is important because this can help you find your microphone or your video. So if you click settings, I can see here that audio and video are the two tabs. The Jabra, that's my headset. That's the name of my headset. But you also have built in and you will likely have different options than I do. For speakers, I'm choosing Jabra because I'm using my headset. But again, you might have different options. Under the video tab here, it's letting me choose a camera. Right now, I only have my built-in camera hooked up. But if you had an external camera or a monitor that has a camera on it, you could change that. You can also change resolution. Not something you will need to do, really. Um, if you find you are having connection issues, you could switch to audio only or lower the resolution. But those are the basic settings you have to know. Now, I'm going to send Cheryl a message asking her to join our meeting. So she's going to hop in with us here. Um, and once she joins, we'll see her name show up. So when we click on that Google Meet and we come into this area, it's just your getting set up area where you can see yourself. It's kind of like a waiting room and you can wait in here until you see others in or you can always join now and then you will also see them as they come in. Okay, so this is really, like I said, just a getting started area and I keep looking to the side to see if um, Cheryl's going to message me about coming in and there she is. So I'm going to hit join now. And there we see Cheryl's in the room. So it's taking a minute on our screen to clear. There we go. And we see a much more clear image of her. So first things first, if I'm doing a live lecture using Google Meet, I definitely want to record that just in case any students cannot make it. So the first thing I'm going to do when I come into the meeting is go and do that recording. Now, if you look in the bottom right corner down here, see how I move my mouse up, that white bar goes away, but once I move it going down, it shows up again. If you click on the three dots in the bottom right corner, you see more options. And record meeting is at the top, the big button. So if you click record meeting, it will give you a message to ask for consent. And once you accept, says recording will start soon 
and we see the red record button or the red record bar in the top left. Okay, so now we are definitely recording our meeting. I can see other options through here. If I click on those three dots, we can go back to the settings if we need to check on our phone or our, um, I'm sorry, our audio or video connection. You can also call in on a phone if you're having audio issues. We could make this move to full screen. We can play with our layout. We're not going to cover that in this quick video, but those are definitely things you can do in your options. So once I'm teaching the class in here, I can see who's in it by going up to the white options in the top right. And if I click on the people, I can see that Cheryl and I are the two in there. I'm interjecting a bit because I just want to show everyone that even though Cheryl is on my screen during the actual meet, uh, it's recording me since I'm the one speaking and presenting. So you can see that in the smaller window here that I'm the one talking and that is actually being pulled from the meet recording. And later you'll notice that even though on my screen I might pin someone, it will always record the speaker or the presentation that's being displayed. So it's showing me Cheryl because she's the person I'm speaking to and I can see her right here. If I click on myself, I can see myself. I click on her, it pins her to be seen. Now, during a class, we probably don't want to hear any of the background noise happening on Cheryl's end, so you'd, you'd want to tell students to go ahead and mute their microphones, and they can mute their microphones by clicking on the turn off microphone in the bottom white bar. So Cheryl, can you go ahead and mute your microphone? And if we found that a student didn't know how to do that, we can tell them to navigate to the bottom and do it. Or I'll show you in a moment how to share your screen, and you could even show them on your screen how to do that. So this is the first area where we see people. Now, you might want to use this to present something to the class, and that's really great for sharing slides or walking through a document or something like that. And in order to do that, we're going back to this white bar at the bottom, and we can click Present Now. And you have choices here. Presenting your entire screen means everything you're seeing. And if you're hooked up to an extra monitor to do an extended desktop, it will also present that as part of your entire screen. You can also just choose a window, and it will show you all of the windows you have open, I have Finder here, I have our Meet, and I actually have a Google Chat going on here. So I could pick which screen I want to share in there. So my advice to you is if you want to go over a document or a PowerPoint of some kind, you should load that first and then hit the present. So looking at my screen here, I preloaded a PDF that maybe I want to go over this PDF with my students. So in order to go over this PDF with my students, I would open it, and you can go through Finder and find it and open it. So let's go back to the Google Meet and see what it looks like on that end. So since I'm in here, it's telling me you are presenting, meaning they are seeing this screen here. If I click over on this people area again, I now see that my presentation is one of the people in the room. So something important to know here is in Google Meet, you can actually pin something to your screen so that you are focused on seeing that. If I click the pin, I can see the presentation that I'm doing. And this is kind of a lot of layers because I only chose to present that PDF window over here. So when I move around in that PDF window, that's what's moving on my presentation person or my screen, my presentation screen in here. All right, if I go back to myself, I'm pinning myself on my screen. So where this gets a little confusing, and I want to mention this in case troubleshooting for this comes up for your class, is if they click on the people and then they actually pin a person, so if they were to pin a classmate or if they were to pin you talking, 
and you can see when something is pinned because it has that little push pin. If they pinned you talking and you were presenting, they wouldn't see your presentation because they have pinned your face. Okay, and this goes for even if they pin a someone else in their class, like I just pinned Cheryl, I only see her. So if they pin someone, ask them what they're seeing and all they have to do to stop pinning is click that pin button again, okay? And when they click that pin button again, they should see whatever you are presenting to the group, right? We don't want anything pinned at the top because if they pin something at the top, they will not see your presentation. Okay, the other option would be telling them to hit the pin on your presentation so that they see your presentation. So that's important to know, especially when we're talking about how they're accessing the material that you have on the screen. I'm interjecting again just to clarify something. So if you look on the screen, you can see on the right that that is what the recording has captured. So again, this pinning thing, it's more about what the person actually looking at it sees, and it doesn't correlate to what is being done in the recording itself. So if you're just using Google Meet as a way to record a lecture, it's always going to record what you're presenting and then the person who's talking as we can see in the screen on the right. So even though in my video demo, I'm just showing you what I'm doing as the person running the Meet and what I'm seeing on my screen, what it is recording is what is presenting or who is talking. Right. So just clarifying that because I, I realized in editing this that that gets a bit confusing. Another thing that's really great to know about Google Meet is there are times where you might be presenting and students will have questions. Now, if I'm presenting over here in the PDF, I cannot see hands being raised. Right. So I would not know if a student has a question. If you want them to be able to ask questions during the class, they can do that using a chat that's occurring in the Google Meet. So Cheryl, could you go ahead and ask a question in the chat and then I'm going to show on this video how that looks. Okay, so I heard a noise in my in my headset here, and you didn't hear that, but there was a little ding noise. And on my Google Meet screen, I can see chat over here and it says one. So if I'm back on this view, let's start back here. This is my people, this is my chat. So if you click on the people, see people in the room, click on chat, see chat there. So I can see the chat. And this is a way that students can ask you questions. Now you can handle questions however you think is best. You can tell them to just throw a question in during the lecture. You can tell them you'll pause after five minutes and take questions. However you want to do that is up to you. But the chat is a great way to have people ask questions without turning on their mic and interjecting. So what I would do for chat is have them pose the question in here. And Cheryl's asking, can you explain what an XML ID is? And so then I could also go back to the people window and I could say, Cheryl, could you please turn on your microphone and ask the question so the whole class can hear it? And the class can see the chat transcript, but just in case, it's sometimes nice to hear it verbally. I'm just wondering if you can explain what an XML ID is. Okay, great. And that was part of my PDF that I was sharing. So now I can go back to people. I'm going to pin my presentation just because that helps me think through it. And then let's take a look in here. All right, so now I'm presenting still. I'm looking in here and I can tell her what that XML ID is based on this list, okay? So maybe I come back and answer the question. I can go back into the chat and I can chat with her. Cheryl also made a suggestion for how to use chat, so I'm going to let her pop in. What what else have you been recommending folks use that chat feature for? Um, I think that it would be ideal to put key terms and vocabulary items within that chat so that those important items uh, stay in front of the students um, or stay foremost in the students' minds. 
Okay. So you can and do something along I those see, lines. I see key terms for today's lecture, XML, element, and attribute. Okay, great. So now Cheryl is seeing in the chat. One of the other great things about the chat transcript is since we're recording this class, this meeting, this event has many names, I know. Uh, since we're recording this interaction in Google Meet, we can actually access the chat transcript later. So you don't have to worry too much about keeping track of everything. Uh, say you're running out of time at the end, but there are five students who asked a question right at the end of class. You could always answer those later in Notebook or in an email if you needed. So another great feature in here that I'd recommend people using for accessibility and, and just to have in general, let me just switch, there we go. I'm on my presentation again, uh, is to turn on captions. So we see at the bottom here and our white bar that we keep popping up is the CC turn on captions. And if you click that button, we can see it says captions have been turned on and it might take a moment to start, oh, I can see it, let me move, ah, let me move that. And you can see my caption, it's doing the closed caption at the bottom. I do not see it. <clears throat> yes, that's because it has to be turned on for the individual viewing it. Jumping in with an important thing to note is that the closed caption will not save to the recorded video. Uh, we did additional testing and discovered this, so it's really intended for the live Google Meet. Yes, yeah, so when you turn the caption on, you can also tell the students to go ahead and turn it on on their end if they need assistance with that. Great, I've Thank turned you. my captions on. Great, okay, and every time we move around that white bar does come back up. So. Um, be aware of that and we can also move the screen a bit and it's a little bit better because we don't have that meet sharing window thing at the bottom okay something to keep in mind too with the captions is they're not going to be perfect so for example let me get that bar to go away if i say hi my name is kelly van washinova yeah so it says kelly van wash anova which is what the caption heard. So some terms might not come across correctly. And to be quite honest, I'm not sure how it handles translation, but some terms based on your subject, it might not come across correctly. So keep that in mind with the, the caption feature. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click out of people. I do have Cheryl on my, sh my screen right now. I can also turn the captions off if you find it distracting. So once I'm done with class, all right, I'm all set here. Bye class, have a great day. <laughs> Bye, thanks Cheryl. I can go down to this button. This is the leave call button on the white bar down there. And I can choose leave call. And there it goes. I have left the meeting. It gives you this option to return to home screen. And this home screen that they're calling it, this is just the meet.google.com. If you come straight to meet.google.com, this is what you see. You could always start a meeting from here, but I don't recommend doing that if you're scheduling a class, because if you start a meeting in here and just click continue, your class isn't going to have that information. Right, so I've just started the meeting spontaneously. I can now copy this information. And I really, I could ask people to join this meeting that I spontaneously started, but it's not going to be a calendar event. It's not going to be a set link. I can just grab it in here. So I don't recommend going that route. I recommend putting it on the calendar and then joining the meeting in there, okay? So now that our meeting is over, let's take a look at that calendar invite. And this is really fantastic. I, d I haven't seen this before, but what Google did for us is when we go back into that information here, we can see a video and that video is in our Google Drive from our meeting, okay? So that Google, it might take a few minutes. It'll probably take like an hour. Um, that video is actually probably one 
I did an initial run through, a practice one before recording. So that's probably my initial video. But it will eventually show up there. So that's wonderful. And then also to know is you will get an email. And let me show you what that email looks like. So once your recording has been saved in the Google Drive, and it might take a little bit of time. This is one I actually have from yesterday when I did a demo on it. But once your recording has saved in your Google Drive, Google will generate an email for you. And you can click to open it in your Google Drive. It also sends you the chat transcript here. So if you click chat transcript, it opens it up over here. I had a very short chat in that meeting. That was it. Um, you can also click on the video and it will take you over to the video, which was a very flattering angle for me, obviously. Uh, but that is going to take those right over into your drive. Now, it does set them in your Google Drive. So if you go in your Google Drive, I'm not sure where the folder location is, but let's just take a look here. And I do have one for Meet Recordings. So all of those Meet Recordings I've done in the last few days are in there. Here is a chat transcript from a meeting I have. So those are located in that meetings folder, but if I need to access them from here, I can click on them. Once you have those recordings, I highly recommend renaming them in the Google Drive and you can right click on them and click rename and say class from March 12th or however you want to name those because then now you have them tracked and have a reference for them. The other thing I recommend is then sharing these in the notebook course. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look in notebook. And I went ahead and just jumped right into one of my demo courses because I don't want to accidentally show anything else on the screen. But navigate to your course on the left here. And in your documents tab, you can go ahead and just paste the link to the recording in your Google Drive, okay? So I'm in the Documents tab in Notebook, but I'm going to switch to my tab for the Meet recording. Here's my Meet recording. Now, you could download the video and re-upload it in Notebook. That is an option, um, but that's a step you don't have to take. What you can do is you can go ahead and click in here. I right-clicked, or you can click on the person up there. And just to show you, in case your drive looks a little different than mine, yours might look like this. And that's just a different view. Mine looks like this. So I can go ahead. Oops, I changed my view again. All right. I can go ahead and click on the recording I want. And I can choose Share. Now, the easiest way is to get the shareable link. So I click Shareable Link. Anyone at Denison University? can view the link and I click copy the link. The other way to do it, let me get out of here, is to click there and turn it so only people, specific people can access and then you enter the people who were in your course. Unless you have something you're really worried about them sharing out, you don't have to do that. You can just make it anyone at university with the link can view and copy that link. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that link here. Click Done. And then back, navigating back to my notebook under Documents, I'm going to click Add Link. Paste the link. And then under Title, say Google Meet Class from March 12th. Okay. I'm going to click Create. So now they can just click from this class here and it will open in their Google Drive right there. All right. Something else that you can do is you can go ahead and click the share on bulletin button and say, here is the video from today's class visibility now, or you can delay it if you want and click the share button. And then on bulletin, 
it will give them the reminder, here it is. So now they can access it from both Documents tab and from their bulletin. Okay, so that's how to do that. I'm going to move back over to my recordings in my Google Drive and take a look in here for a moment. So something that has happened is if we look down here at the bottom, this is actually this bottom class. This is the one we just finished with Cheryl. So if I click there, I see the transcript, which you can also share with your class. And then down here is the video. So the difference, you see the videos up here with the little play buttons, and then this video at the bottom, how it only has that red like video icon. It's just because Google hasn't finished processing it in the drive. So if I double click on it here, it's not going to auto play yet. See how it says we're processing this video? So I think it takes about an hour or so depending on the time and how long the video was. But if you choose download, you can always download that right onto your computer to access. But just keep in mind that if you did decide to keep it in the Google Drive and share with your students, which is what I recommend, and you choose to share it, how we discussed, they won't see it and play it in the Google Drive until it is finished processing. Again, not a huge deal, should not take that long, but keep that in mind in case something comes up. All right. Well, thank you for listening to me today and for watching the video. Um, please let us know if there are questions, and we will have some live classes over the next few weeks. Thank you.